Hello and welcome to A-Level Chemistry at Waldegrave School. I'm just going to go through the course and if you're thinking about studying chemistry, so hopefully this answers some of your questions. So, uh, firstly, why study chemistry? Uh, chemistry will help us solve many future problems, including sustainable energy and food production, managing our environment, providing safe drinking water and promoting human and environmental health. It teaches extremely useful and very transferable skills, such as logic, reasoning and problem solving. So what interests should I have if I want to follow this course? Um, understanding chemistry helps you understand the world around you. Um, cooking is chemistry. Everything you can touch or taste or smell is a chemical. To study chemistry, you should be interested in finding out on atomic and molecular level. Qualities a successful chemist possesses are a good grasp of mathematics, excellent practical skill and an inquiring mind. Um, also, we can relate a lot in with the current pandemic of coronavirus. There will be lots of chemists currently working on a vaccine for this virus. So it's very relatable in our news and world today. OK, so why study chemistry? Uh, again, an understanding of chemistry is important in many careers and can lead into almost any profession. You can also learn a variety of transferable skills through the year, including experimental skills, which involves your observing and your recording, analysing evidence and drawing conclusions, uh, written communication and problem solving skills. And I cannot emphasise enough how transferable these skills are and how desirable they are to other career choices. Here are examples of um, work placements that students done. Um, the top three companies are Shell, Air Products and Eli Lilly. Now, many students last year went to Air Products and done um, chemical engineering uh, work experience, which they absolutely loved. So if anybody's there, they don't really know what they want to do, but they know they love chemistry and they love maths, then chemical engineering is really brilliant course to do and extremely diverse, very versatile and um, really using your brain and very challenging. So that's something you may want to consider in the future or any form of engineering in general. But if you're interested in chemistry, that's the one. Um, with regards to other subjects that you can use chemistry in, we've got, you know, working lots in the labs, if you like working in the labs. Um, so forensic scientist, pharmacology, toxology, and the bottom three, you've got a dentist, medicine and pharmacist. Now, obviously, if you want to do chemistry, you need to have, um, sorry, if you want to do any of those three courses, you have to have chemistry um, and also veterinary science. So here is um, universities that students from Waldegrave have went on to study chemistry at. Now, we've got Oxford. We had two actually last year, or actually one of each. One went to Oxford, one went to Cambridge to study chemistry or natural sciences. Uh, UCL Department of Chemistry, York, Imperial College, Bristol, Keel, and University of Birmingham. Now, there's only some examples. Um, so what will you study on the course? So this is year one, right? And in year one, there are a total of four modules. OK, now note, you may have done AQA GCSE. If you went to Waldegrave last year, you've done AQA exam board. Other schools do different ones. I think a couple do Edexcel. So OCR is just a different um, exam board that we use for our A-levels. So uh, in year one, as we can see, there's four modules. Module one, development of practical skills in chemistry. Module two, foundations in chemistry. So that's stuff like your chemistry calculations Um periodic table, bonding, just the basics really. Uh, module three, periodic table and energy. So that's trends in the periodic table, exothermic and endothermic reactions, equilibrium and all would be linked in there. And then module four was core organic chemistry, which again, you did touch on, touch on only in um, GCSEs. Now you go into a lot more greater depth at A level. So within these four modules, you will have multiple assessments. OK, um, your mock exams, we usually have two papers, a breadth in chemistry paper and a depth in chemistry paper. Both of them are work worth equal amount in marks. And um, 
yeah, the depth in chemistry paper is usually a lot more difficult. And now both papers use all of the content from each of the modules, one, two, three, and four. So it's nothing, there's, so all modules are assessed in the breadth paper and all modules are assessed in the depth paper. And this is just for your year one. And note again, there's no coursework element. So it's really, really important that throughout the year, um, if there's any queries or things that you don't understand, you really, 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 really need to um, ask somebody and figure out how do you um, move forward because uh, all of these things will link and link and link into the next topics. So moving on, um, so this is year two. Uh, now in year two we can see it looks really nice and easy, module five and module six. So year one you had four modules, uh, year two you've only got two but as I said module five, physical chemistry and transition elements, do not be fooled these two modules and organic chemistry analysis are extremely difficult. They are so, 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 so challenging. But personally for me, these are my two favourite modules on the entire A-level chemistry course. I just love how you really are using your brain. Um, you know, I to this day still get challenged when I'm doing these and teaching these topics and I still learn something different. I absolutely, I just so, I love it so much. And with the likes of module five in particular, physical chemistry and transition elements, there's so much maths involved in that. So if you like maths, whoa, you are going to love module five. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, module six, people tend to at the start not really enjoy module six and find that, oh, this is really, really, really tough. But actually, as it progresses, you'll find module six will get easier. You'll find module five will just say progressively hard slog. But module five is so beautiful in the fact that um, it's just so satisfying. It's just practice, practice, practice. And yeah, you feel really clever when you're doing module five, which is nice. Uh, again, you'll have multiple assessments from module five and module six. And we can, we'll also, as I said, incorporate content from modules one to four. OK, now at the bottom, it shows you your three exams. So year one doesn't actually, your mock papers don't count towards anything towards your A-level. The only thing they do is they'll give us an insight into what to predict to you for UCAS. So there's no point in becoming complacent either, thinking that they mean nothing. They do. Um, they will they'll tell us what your UCAS predicted grade will be. We'll add to that. Um, now, your year 13 final exams, there's no coursework. So it's just literally based on these three papers. So paper one is periodic table elements and physical chemistry and very much weighted in module five. Yes, modules from AS are taken into it from year one, but most of it, I would say about 70% would be um, your module five. And it's beautiful. I love it. Uh, paper two, synthesis and analytical techniques. So that's again your organic chemistry stuff. So that's again very much weighted in module six. However, with this one, it's not as much weighted because everything in organic chemistry, you know, it's a process. You have to build upon it. So it's lots of things from year one will be taken into that. And then the last paper is your unified paper. And as you can see there, it's worth slightly less than the other two papers. That is literally a free for all modules one to six uh, assessed and they can ask you absolutely everything and anything and I really love that paper because it really 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 shows me who's the really fantastic chemist here you know and who can really understand and problem solve effectively so it's really nice um okay so here we go this is our assessment overview so that is your periodic table elements and physical chemistry a hundred marks two hours and 15 minutes um and look this is the content. So module one, which is your practical stuff, module two, module three and module five. So those four modules are assessed in this paper. OK. And again, there's the names of the modules here. Um, paper two, again, 37 percent, 100 marks, same amount of time. And you are assessed in the following modules. Module one, which is the practicals. Module two, which is your foundations. Module four, which is your core organic chemistry. And then six, your synthesis, organic chemistry and analysis. And then the last one, which is 26 percent. So it's actually worth less. It's less marks, but people find this a lot more challenging. You'll never hear somebody saying, oh, I thought this was easy and these were hard. It's always like, whoa, this, this one was tough. You know, these will be grand, but this one will be tough, I think. And then the last, that there encompasses, as I said, all six modules. It's just a free-for-all. 
And then the last thing, which is your practical endorsement certificate. So basically, we have to pass or fail you on your practicals. You have a certain number of practicals to do, and they all have to be different so that we can have different practical skills. And yeah, so we will have a list of that and we check off and pass you on different elements. And yeah, we'll do lots and lots of practicals. So you do have loads of opportunities to pass that. But it's important that you do, um, you know, engage with it and take it seriously. OK, how will you study? So there's four lessons per week in chemistry. You will have two teachers teaching two different sides of the course. So one teacher will focus on um, your inorganic and physical chemistry. And then your other teacher will do your organic chemistry, which, you know, but that will also involve your foundations and practicals and whatnot in that. Uh, you've got independent study during work periods. So they're not free periods. They are work periods. And, you know, it's really important if you get into a good routine from the start and actually do your work in your work periods. And also, I think I would highly recommend that you make lots of chemistry friends so that you can work together. It's really, really nice when I go down to the study base and I see a group of chemists working together and then, you know, they come and they can ask me as well to help them with maybe a little concept they don't understand. And it just really helps you. And especially if you go on to do to university to study any kind of science related course, you know, it very much is a group work activity. So you will learn so much more uh, collectively as a group than you will as an individual, in my opinion, and just even listening to different people's ideas and perspectives on things. And then you've got, there is a support session available and you may be asked to come to that, maybe compulsory to you um, and just take advantage if you can go or not. But yeah, I think the important thing is make some chemistry friends and people that you can work with and are happy and comfortable with to ask questions. And if you don't understand from something, you ask your teachers. So again, back to our practical element, I'll talk a lot about PAGs. So PAGs is your practical assessed groups. And um, these, again, are assessed as part of your exams. Now, they're not, it's not a specific like um, assessment, but each, the practicals are assessed within your paper one, paper two and paper three. So no coursework. These practicals are assessed within the papers. OK, you have to complete your practical lessons. Now, if you do miss one, uh, hopefully we can rearrange you to do a practical another time or you will pick up different practical skills from other practicals. OK, so sometimes I get students, especially in year 13, you know, we do a lot of independent practical work. So I'll tell them I want you to make this. Now I need you to write me out the whole procedure and how you're going to do this. And they need to have worked out the amounts. So you're using your quantitative chemistry skills to work out the amount of substance and things you need to make up standard solutions. And if you don't do that pre-lab, it's you're just not allowed into the lesson. So it's really, really important because you have to remember you're working with quite dangerous equipment and you know you have to be really really careful so you have to really take it seriously and it makes it so much easier for yourself and makes you a much better chemist if you come prepared to the lessons um how to prepare so this is your textbook your ocra um textbook so you've got ocrb and ocra note you need ocra okay you can buy the two together. So this is just for year one. You can buy year one and then you can buy year two or you can buy them all um, as one textbook. Another thing, if you know anybody who done A-level chemistry uh, OCRA, maybe ask them if they've finished in the last, since 2015, if any of the person you know has done it, maybe ask them for their textbooks and you can use those. Um, so you purchase it or as I said, get it from somebody that you may know. Um, revisit GCSE notes because again everything from chemistry will build upon what you know and people say that I've heard students saying oh somebody said when I do a level chemistry everything's a lie well no it's not you're building upon what you know and doing it in greater depth so it's really important that you do still understand your GCSE notes because we do revisit lots of GCSE stuff and um, there is some transition work available I put it on that site um, on preparing for A-level sciences. Um, this is another book that can be quite useful, Head Start to AS Level Chemistry. Now it's an older book, but it's still actually quite good. And what you will need, so your OCRA chemistry specification. So it's really important, I think, to always have your spec. Now, back in the day, we would have got them to print it. 
now because we're trying to print less you know you don't have to print it but just be really really aware of your specification lever arch file you'll definitely need that with dividers for your different modules now you have four modules in year one but all together of the over the two-year course you should have six modules uh ocra chemistry textbook um, you'll definitely need a lab coat and you'll definitely need goggles and a lab book okay so these three things are really important and don't think it's a waste of money actually because see your lab coat if you do anything again sciencey you will need it at university you know I still use the lab coat that I bought when I was 16 so yeah you know it's still going strong over 10 years later so yeah um, buy a lab coat goggles as well and again you can get goggles in school but people complain that they're what's they call them they're all scraped to the front so maybe you would like your own nice set of goggles we use lab books now as well because it's just handier in terms that at least all your practicals are together as opposed to everywhere and anywhere so yeah i think a lab book's more controlled and also when you go to university it's lab books and you really have to use your lab book properly okay um, optional but useful yeah here's other textbooks and revision guides that I'd recommend now you don't need them but they are really useful so this one at the start the revision guide oh yeah that revision guide's quite good and there's just some nice wee questions on it this one here I must say I really really love this book here really 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 love this and oh I love him as well this is brilliant so these are all brilliant and um, these revision guides if I had to choose mm, it's a hard decision but I think I would go for that one in the middle if I had a choice um, so yeah, I hope you find this useful and if you've got any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me. Thank you very much.